three. All right, welcome back for the second installment of the video recap for Late March Axis and Allies in San Francisco. I'm Jason and I stood off against Quincy and Angel and Carl and Eric in the first multiplayer playtest of my mini global 1940 variant for the 1942 second edition map. This is the final position at the end of the eighth round as the Axis have narrowly failed to take the 10th victory city marked by the pink cubes that they needed to win the game. If the allies can hold on for eight rounds and they automatically win the game on the theory that at some point the overwhelming industrial might of the Russians and Americans will turn the tide. Uh, the game started off with a intense uh, allied crush in the North African region. The British built a factory in South Africa and in India, which they used to feed troops toward Egypt, along with large-scale landings by the Americans in Morocco as soon as the Americans entered the war. The Italians were able to hang on for a little while by reinforcing with a three-fighter air force, uh, but eventually they were pushed off of the African continent. The Germans took France uh, with heavy losses on the first round, but still managed to keep a bit of a tank corps and air force together, which they were then able to turn around and use to support a large infantry push against Russia. The Germans were able to uh, gain an edge against Russia, uh, pushing through from a factory placed in Finland and advancing into Karelia and Archangel while the Allies focused further south in the Mediterranean. Meanwhile, on the eastern half of the board, China played defensively and uh, took out almost the entire Japanese army when it went down at the end of round two. The British were then able to build up in and hold India, bringing the White Sea and Black Sea Russian fleets in for naval support against a growing Japanese air force. The Japanese broke through the Russian lines in Siberia, helping to push the Russians back to Moscow, uh, but with not quite enough troops to actually take Moscow. They were able to can open West Russia late in the game, using a modest air force to open a hole so that Germany's five tanks could go up against four Russian infantry. But amazingly, the infantry held. And then again on the next turn, when the main stack of Russian infantry was attacked by the main stack of the German army, uh, the Russians held magnificently, not only retaining Moscow, but uh, doing so with such a large army that the follow-up Japanese forces in Siberia never really had a chance to take the capital. The Allies were pretty nervous because of Japanese gains in the Pacific. The uh, Allies entirely abandoned the Pacific after round two, except for one Russian sub. Mm. And even the hunt for Red October was ultimately concluded in the Axis favor. So the <laughs> Japanese took Honolulu, Manila, Sydney, uh, and at one point also had Chongqing, and were uh, trying to find that 10th victory city. But because Moscow held and India held, it just was not there. The Russians marched the survivors of the Siberian campaign along with uh, the Stalingrad forces into Chongqing to liberate it, holding the Axis just short. And so it came down to the wire. It was a very exciting match. We like this format. Thanks again to all of my uh, comrades in arms for playtesting this exciting new setup.